Hi, I'm Mark, and in this video we're going to look at 10 really easy minor pentatonic licks. So the way the video is going to work is I'm going to play the licks over an example solo, and then I'll pull them apart and show you them one by one. So, here's the solo. So there you just heard all the licks over an example uh, back and track. I should say the back and track is available as a separate YouTube uh, video and I'll put links in the description below. I'll also put on screen throughout the lesson the tab. And if you want to copy the tab, just drop me an email. Again, details in the description below. Okay, all the licks come from the D minor pentatonic um, scale, which is this one here. So that's what we call box position one. I'm also using part of box position two. So those notes there, that's taken from part of what we call box position two. And you'll notice in these licks, we're in the key of D minor. Um, I'm really targeting the, uh, the D notes here and the D notes here. And that's because those are the notes at the root of the key, the underlying key. And so those notes are really going to always sound strongest. Okay, um, the backing track is D minor. It's almost a standard traditional 12 bar, uh, 12 bar blues. It's not quite, it's 12 bars long, but the way I'm approaching the four chord, the G, is slightly different. And because of that, lick five and lick seven kind of um, move out of the minor pentatonic um, scale slightly. Um, but I'll explain those when we get to them. So lick one, nice and slow, goes like this. Okay, so I'm using uh, D string and G string, my, uh, those notes on the minor pentatonic. Okay, uh, lick two is kind of like a call and response from that, so um, it's a similar phrase, uh, but we just end it in a slightly different way, and we're going to play it starting on the 14th fret of the G string. Okay, so again, we've, we've lick one, box position one, lick two, box position two. Um, play them together, nice and slow. Okay, lick three now is uh, going to use a bend. I'm going to bend up from the 15th fret here, top E string, until it gets to the same pitch as the 17th fret there, so we're bending, it's actually bending a G all the way up to an A. And then we're just going to hit, we're going to bring it down and hit 15, 13 on the top E to um, 15 on the D, this on the B string, which is the D note, because that's the root of our, our key. Nice and slow. So lick four now goes like this. Really slow. So again, just those notes of the minor pentatonic walking down them, but instead of just walking down in a straight line, halfway through a stop and go go back a note. So we get three notes in a line and then four notes in a line. And again. But when I play them, every note is kind of played for the same length of time. Okay, so that was lick four. Lick five now is the is where we're playing over an underlying F chord to a G. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull out two notes from the F chord up here, which is going to be 
uh, the 14th fret and the 13th fret on the G and B string, uh, respectively. And then we're going to do so. That's what we're going to play over our underlying F chord when it moves up to the G. We're going to move that up just two whole frets. We're playing um, 16 on the G and 15 on the B string. I'm going to hit those five times each. So nice and slow goes like this. And you'll notice for the first ones, for the first hit there on each one, um, I'm actually sliding into it. So again, up to speed. Okay, and that's just to uh, outline the underlying F and G chords that are underneath there in the backing track. Okay, so that's lick five. We're going to repeat that again in lick seven, but in between there, we get lick six, which goes like this. Nice and slow. So again, box position two, and again, you'll notice playing the lick, but ending on the D note, um, the root note of our underlying chord progression, because that's the note that's always gonna sound strongest. Okay, so lick six, nice and slow, again. And like all good licks, when you hang on that last note, you just shake it about a bit. Okay, lick seven then is exactly the same as lick five, so I won't go into that again, but it goes like this. And then we're into uh, lick eight, and lick eight goes like this. Okay, you can do this by either picking every single note, or you can do it with um, pull-offs. So here it would be with pull-offs. Doesn't matter how you do it. Again, the idea is I'm walking down just that straight pentatonic shape, but instead of just walking down in a straight line, I walk down a couple of notes, go back a note, down a couple of notes, back a note, and it just kind of breaks up and makes it sound like you're not just walking down a scale. So if we just played the scale, it would sound like this, which is pretty boring. So I, I make it a bit more interesting by making a bit of movement in there. Okay, and nice and slow. And that's a fairly common technique. Walking down a scale, but going down, say, three notes, back a note, three notes, back a note, something like that. Or four notes down, and then back a note, four notes down. Those kind of things. Call sequences used in rock music an awful lot, just to make scale sound way more interesting. Okay, so that was lick eight. Lick nine now goes like this. So underneath now we've moved to an A chord and so we're kind of just uh, emphasizing that by anchoring off this A note which is the 10th fret of the B string and making that our, our kind of our root note just for a moment. So nice and slow. And you'll notice when I'm playing 13th fret there of the B string I might be bending it slightly sharp here and there. And you want to do that if you, particularly if you want to make it sound like really bluesy. Okay, so that was lick eight. Uh, no, sorry, that was lick nine. And um, lick ten now goes like this. Okay, so it's at this point that I need to interrupt proceedings. You see, the actual lick that I played in the solo wasn't the lick that I had intended to play. Now, the two licks are only subtly different, but they are different nonetheless. Both start the same, but what I actually ended up playing had a slightly simpler ending, with two fewer notes. So here's what I actually played in the solo. Okay, but this is what I'd actually intended to play. Anyways, it was only in the edit that I realised the difference. So, after that brief explanation, back to the lesson. Okay, and I'll do it really slowly. So, two ideas here. First one is the bend. I'm bending up 13th fret until it's the, the, the pitch of the D string, uh, sorry, the pitch of the D note, which is... Um, 15th fret B string. Okay. 
So it's bending it like that um, because obviously, as I said before, that D note there is the root note of our underlying uh, chord progression. So I'm bending that up and I'm hitting it uh, four times. But I'm not just hitting it four times straight, which would be like this. I'm actually um, bending into it each time. So what I'm doing there is I'm bending up and as I'm hitting it, and then before I hit it again, I just release very slightly and then push it back into the note. Do that four times. What you'll also hear uh, is what I'll often do is when hitting that note, I'm actually, I'm using my other fingers to kind of deaden all the other strings because I don't want those ringing out. And I'm pushing through, the, through those other strings in order to get to uh, that B string. Okay, so you're doing that four times and then what we're doing is we're just doing that idea again of walking down the pentatonic minor scale uh, until we get to that uh, D note which is 12th fret of the D string. Although um, we're not actually just walking down a straight line, we're doing that thing where we walk down a few notes, go back and then walk down some more. Okay, and now the final lick, lick 11. A uh, really, really simple lick, and it just goes like this. Okay, nice and slow. So we're just sliding in up to the 12th fret on the A string, and then we're hitting 10th fret, G, uh, D string, 12th fret, G string, before finally ending on our root note, where we always come back to, which is D string, 12th fret, D note. So I hope you like this lesson. I hope you um, spotted the inspiration for the backing track. I was trying to see if I could um, replicate that particular drum sound. Um, and having done so, I thought, oh, actually, that'll make really interesting um, 12 bar blues to jam over. So I'm not trying to replicate that particular band or that particular song. I just, I was trying to replicate the drums and having done that, I um, thought actually I could turn this into something else. So that's kind of where it came from. Hope you enjoyed the licks. I've got plenty of other videos very similar where I show other similar licks. Um, I did a lesson recently, about, <coughs> about a year ago maybe, um, where I did a similar thing where I, the inspiration behind that particular backing track was C Cream's White Room. Again, it was in D minor. So if you want more D minor pentatonic licks, go check out that lesson. I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you to everybody who's been supporting me. Um, if you like the video, like it. Um, please leave a comment because I'm just in my spare bedroom on my own and it's nice to know that somebody out there is watching. Um, if you've learned something, please let me know. Um, and I'll see you again.